this work we've been doing so far has just been for this part of the flow chart. How to figure out the direction of the magnetic force on a test charge. Well, the next logical thing is to figure out this part of the flow chart, which is, tells us the magnitude of the magnetic force on a test charge. Well, let's say you increase the size of the test charge in magnitude. Well, we're, now we're just focusing on the magnitude, of course, because we already know how to find the direction. Do you think this is going to tend to give you a bigger magnetic force or a smaller magnetic force if the charge is bigger? Yeah. So um, should this go in the numerator or the denominator? Should the charge go in the numerator or the denominator? Numerator. So it has a direct relationship with the force. Let's say you increase the speed of the charge and you hold other things constant. Do you think that would increase or decrease the magnetic force? Because we know that it's only the fact that we're moving that allows us to have any magnetic force at all. If we weren't moving at all, the force would be zero, so it stands to reason the more motion there is, the greater the force. Okay. So should V go in the numerator or the denominator here? Numerator. So it has a direct relationship with the force. If we increase the magnetic field, do you think that would increase or decrease the magnetic force? Um, it would increase the force. Because the force comes from the field. Yeah. If there was no field at all, there wouldn't be any force. So it should B go in the numerator or the denominator? Also the numerator. Because again, there's a direct relationship. In fact, this formula doesn't have a denominator. Everything has a direct relationship with the force. Okay. And you won't be surprised that all we care about in this formula is the component of the velocity that is perpendicular to the magnetic field, since that's why we were already using that when we were working with directions. So here we would only use the component of V that is perpendicular to F. Again, most of the problems on the exam, that would be the entire velocity. But you'll probably see some problems in the homework where you're going to have to break this into components in order to use this formula. Uh, and uh, by now you know that I like to use a dot to show when something indicates a magnitude. Well, again, this is all about magnitudes. We already know how to find the direction. So. Um, if you need to find the sign of the force, if it's pointing in the negative or positive direction, again, you would use the right-hand rule to do that. You wouldn't use this formula. this component? Um, that would be V perpendicular. This is the component of V that's perpendicular to V. And what would be a good name for this component? V zero. Which we usually don't care much about in magnetism. Mm -hmm. Now, theta here is the angle between V and B, since B is horizontal. So let's use trigonometry. How would we figure out what V perpendicular is from V using theta? Um, it would be V sine theta. Why are we using the sine? Because V perpendicular is opposite to this angle of theta. So that gives us an alternative formula here. Instead of directly plugging in V perpendicular, you could plug in the overall vector and multiply it by the sine of theta. This is the form that mo you're most likely to see in the textbooks. Um, this is usually written like this, QVB sine theta. But I like to put the sine theta next to the V to show what it's doing. The sine here is operating on the V to isolate just the component that's perpendicular to V. So this is a formula you should be able to figure out if you forgot it, although you can put it in your cheat sheet as well. All right, as far as the exam is concerned, I, I kind of recommend using this formula and maybe this just as a backup because people tend to get confused. The, whole only, the only purpose of the sine is to take the component of V that's perpendicular to V, which on most of the problems will be the entire velocity. By the way, another way of writing this is as a cross product. At this point, your instructor might start to use cross products in lecture. Well, cross product is just a way of multiplying the magnitudes of vectors, but only paying attention to the component of one vector that's perpendicular to another. So what we need to know about cross products is a cross product multiplies the magnitudes of the two vectors 
but it isolates only the component of one vector that's perpendicular to the other vector. And you always do that by taking the sign of the angle between the vectors. For an introductory class, though, cross products are not too important. You can just use these practical formulas. Now we're going to try this problem. Okay. Um, so. so we know that, um, let's see. So B is pointing to the right. I'm sorry, you were saying? Um, B is pointing to the right. Yes. Um, B. Oh, I, I really have to tell you which way this is pointing. Yeah. So why don't I tell you? That's B. Okay, so B is pointing into the board. So um, that. Let's try using this formula rather than this one, because I think this gives us more intuition. Yeah. Okay. Um, and so B, the component of B that's perpendicular to B is. Yeah, you didn't sound too happy about that, but that's right. V is already perpendicular to B. Mm -hmm. So the component that's perpendicular to B is just the entire vector. Okay. What would be V parallel here? Zero. This doesn't have a component that's parallel to B. Again, B is kind of going into the board. Well, we can see that's perpendicular to this vector that's in the plane of the board. Yeah. Okay, and this is going to be usually the case. Usually the velocity will already be perpendicular to B. Okay, good. Um, so... Then you plug in three and plug in uh, four. Good. And plug in the charge. Yeah, so say again exactly which number should I so plug in here? Negative five, three. Now, actually, remember that the only purpose of this formula is oh, to find right. magnitudes. No. So there's oh, naturally no point to plugging in the negative charge there. That's what this dot is to remind us of. Let's just plug in the magnitude of the charge. All right, so I'll plug in five, and what else? And three and four. It doesn't matter whether you consider this to be your positive direction or your negative direction, because we're only plugging in magnitudes here anyway. All right, well, let's uh, get an answer for that. What would that give us? Sixty. Um, Good. What are the units on that going to be? What's the answer to the question? So the force is D and E. Good. Now, that isn't quite full credit, because the question was asking for the force, which is a vector, which means we haven't given the full answer unless we've given both the magnitude and the direction. Okay. And this only tells us the magnitude. OK. So we know that um, V perpendicular Q is in the opposite direction, so it's to the left. Because this is negative, so if V is to the right, QV is to the left. Good. Um, and then my palm faces into the board. Yeah, so our fingers here should be pointing to the left. Our palm should be facing into the board. Good. And force is down. Now we know the force is down. Very good. That's right. Great. Okay, so the full answer would be that the force is 60 newtons down. Remember that originally you wanted to put in, say, a negative 5 here, and it turned out that that didn't make sense because it's not the job of this to tell us the signs um, or the direction. It's the job of the right-hand rule to tell us the sign of the direction. Yeah. Is this now going to be positive or negative? Well, that just depends on what we've chosen as our positive direction. If we chose up as the positive direction, we could say this is now six, negative 60 newtons. Okay. But that's not because this is a negative 5. It's because the force is pointing in the downward direction from the right-hand rule. All right, so we're just going to use this formula to figure out magnitudes. 
All right, and this is something you're pretty sure to have to see on the test and a bunch of times on the exam, a very standard type of problem. So again, you haven't really figured out the magnetic force unless you figured out both the magnitude and the direction. Right hand rule for direction, this formula for the magnitude. It's good that you really went step by step, figuring out each of the different steps you needed. 